long life is humanity's ancient and perennial goal. We often toast to life, but how long can we really live? There are lots of exciting developments and lots of phony promises. But with all the nonsense about longevity, it's time to learn the facts, fads, and fallacies of living longer. The best goal, it seems, is not just to live longer, but to live younger. Better to disembark at 90 with the energy of a 40-year-old than to slog on to 100, wheezing, hobbling, and shuffling. So let's take an honest look at the biology of aging and the best, most sensible advice that's out there. Next, on Closer to Truth, can you really extend your life? Welcome to Closer to Truth. I'm Robert Kuhn. Lotions, potions, diets, drugs, they're everywhere. And they offer a dizzying array of choices. How do we find true longevity amid this clutter of conflicting claims? In this edition of Closer to Truth, we've asked five distinguished doctors to give us their prescriptions for long life. Dr. Roy Walford is professor of pathology at UCLA and an authority on the biology of aging. Dr. W. French Anderson is a pioneer in gene therapy and coincidentally the current national champion in karate for his age group. Dr. Sherwin Newland, the author of How We Die and How We Live, teaches medical ethics at Yale University. Dr. Arthur Devaney, a professor of economics, is a former professional athlete and the originator of a plan called evolutionary fitness. And biophysicist Dr. Gregory Stock is director of UCLA's program on medicine, technology, and society. Roy, give us an overview of the primary factors in aging and what we can do to slow it. The primary factors, there are a number of theories of aging, the free radical theory, DNA repair theory, and so forth. It depends on whether you're dealing with average lifespan or life expectancy or maximum lifespan. Well, let's just say that I want to live as long as I can. What should I be doing? You should eat a low calorie but very high quality diet that will increase maximum lifespan, or there's evidence for that. And then you have to uh, maybe take some supplements and exercise. Those are the best things that we know about now. French, does exercise uh, uh, help uh, longevity? I think we need to separate right from the beginning. There are, there are two elements that go into a longer life. First is if you die from something, something prematurely. If you die from cancer, you, you, you die from heart disease, you, you die from, from pneumonia. That clearly shortens your life. But then the other, other question is how long, if you don't die from a disease, how long would you live and what would that quality of life be? And certainly exercise is a, a, a critical part of that and since we are meant to be to look at all aspects of this um, I'm a bit of a maverick in that um, I my feeling is that diet has much less of a role than than most people including I would guess everyone else on this panel uh, than uh, than is is basically simply simply exercise and being active both mentally and physically suppose somebody hits you with a karate chop then I don't think it made any difference whether I had a hamburger or a pizza or I had a salad. <laughs> Shep, Shep, as, uh, as a surgeon, do you see any danger interrupting the natural order of things by our increasing obsession with life extension? Well, this term life extension is a little ambiguous. We differentiate usually between life expectancy, which is what we would like to extend, and lifespan, which is a natural species specific number of years. What has concerned me recently is something like telomerase research in which one, find that. Uh, <laughs> the telomere is a little bunch of DNA at the end of the chromosome which it was noticed some time ago seems to decrease in size as the cell keeps dividing and there is an enzyme called telomerase that prevents this from happening or at least well not only prevents it from happening but can make the telomere longer. 
And it's been noted that in cells exposed to telomerase, they will divide instead of the usual, let's say, 50 times, uh, 75 times. Mm -hmm. And so people are starting to have these wonderful fantasies that we can do this with an entire body, with all of the cells, and increase our normal lifespan, which is, for our species, about 120 years. That's what concerns me. The Why does it concern you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we think about ecology, obviously, think about our planet, think about social turbulence, think about economic turbulence, but I like to I'm think of... dizzy. Well, get dizzy, <laughs> but I like to think of vanity. Uh, I like to think of the fantasy of continued life, whether it's continued life or resurrection that we have been with ever since we were primitive. I think that there are reasons that all animals and plants die at a given time and talk about tampering with the universe. I can't imagine a greater form of tampering with biological laws than trying to increase lifespan. Or you're an economist, mathematical economist, who takes longevity and fitness very seriously. Tell us about your evolutionary fitness program and then we'll all come after you about it. <laughs> Well, I imagine the environment in which the human genome developed, in which human metabolism is tailored to deal with, and I see it as an evolutionary environment of, uh, of hunter-gatherers ga living with abundant, high-nutritious, low-caloric plant food and uh, lo low-fat game, and uh, engaging activities that uh, promote hormone drives that quench hyperinsulinia, which I think is one of their primary aging Define mechanisms. That. That's when you have too much insulin. Chronically in elevated insulin levels, which are promoted by hypoexertion, i.e. too little exercise, and uh, a diet that is uh, too high in, uh, in simple carbohydrate. And I see aging more as a cascade. The aging cascade is a breakdown in a coordination among all the billions of cooperative cells within the human body. And uh, of course, that's simply one component of, uh, of many of those aspects. But the loss, certainly, of, uh, of glucose uh, response is one of the pr primary leading indicators, as an economist would say, of the cascade that leads to aging and deterioration. Okay. We'll, we'll get back to it. Greg, you're the author of a book called Metaman, which uh, uh, creatively merges humans and machines into what you call a super global organism. Uh, how does life extension fit into this super organism? Well, the superorganism I speak of is really human endeavors, society as a whole, knitted together by our technology. We are beginning to, to act as uh, our, our linkages are very intimate as a, as a species. What the impact that this has upon such things as aging is that we're able to apply our technologies to transform ourselves in one way or another, and we're, going to, we're beginning to gain the capacity to do that. The ob an obvious target of something like this is aging and not just and and not just people dying prematurely but those we would like to extend the human lifespan the maximum human lifespan I think a large number of people would like to do that and as we unravel our own biology to the point that we can begin to uh, alter it and adjust it to the extent that it's possible, I think we will extend human lifespan beyond the 120 years that is possible now. And our challenge today for those who think that this sort of thing might be possible is to last in a healthy state until, until further <laughs> interventions become possible in a generation or so. Roy, let's get uh, away from some of this philosophy and, and back to uh, practicality. Biology. I, mean, I, I want to I live long. You have a book called The 120 yes, Year yes. Diet. What do I have to eat so I can make it to 120? Well, let me address that a little bit generally by saying we have to deal in talking about the biology of aging with the survival curve. You have to understand that to reflect on what any of the gentlemen have said. Now, the survival curve generally looks like that, where you start with the population at time of birth, mm -hmm. and it goes out here and eventually dribbles off sure. to zero out here. Mm -hmm. and this 50% survival point is the average lifespan or life expectancy. Mm -hmm. This is the maximum life.